All right, welcome back to our unit on solutions. Today's topic is factors affecting concentration. So lesson three of three, your objectives are as follows. To learn what factors affect molarity or concentration. Okay, to understand the concept of dilution and calculations that involve dilution. All right, for your quick right here. In one to two sentences, answer one of the questions below here. If you added water or diluted a glass of sweet Kool-Aid, how do you think this would affect its molarity or sweetness? If you added more sugar to a cup of Kool-Aid, how do you think this would affect its molarity or sweetness? Okay, and finally, if you left a glass of salty water out, okay, and a half of the water evaporated, how do you think this affects its concentration or molarity or saltiness? Okay, go ahead and pause this way to your quick right. I'm gonna move on. All right, so standard solutions. A standard solution is a solution whose concentration is accurately known. Okay, you've worked with standard solutions. One molar hydrochloric acid, two molar hydrochloric acid, and so forth. For example, let's make a standard solution here. If we filled up a beaker with one liter of water, okay, 1,000 milliliters, then weighed it out, 74.55 grams of KCl, and we added that, that's also one mole of KCl, and we stirred it, okay, and mixed it in with our solvent, okay, we created a one molar standard solution here of KCl, okay? So we put one mole of KCl in one liter of water, making a one molar standard solution. So for your notes, what is a standard solution? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you're right. I'm going to move on here. All right, so evaporation increases concentration, okay? So here we have a one molar KCl solution with a thousand milliliters of water in it, okay? In the solute here. So a one molar KCl solution, and we wanna make a two molar potassium chloride solution, okay? Well, what would happen if the solution was left outside to evaporate? Let's find out, okay? So the water volume is going down here from a thousand to 500. So notice the volume decreased of water, of solvent, but the same amount of solute remains in solution. Okay, there, therefore now we have a two molar potassium chloride solution. Okay, so you can see by evaporating the solution, more solute, KCl, remains in solution, resulting in a two molar solution. So concentration increased from one molar to two molar by evaporation. All right, well adding solute increases concentration Okay, so let's say we have a one molar KCl solution here. We would like to make a two molar KCl solution. Okay, well, in order to make a stronger, more concentrated solution, okay, we simply need to add more solute, in this case, potassium chloride. Okay, so let's add more solute here. Okay, and notice it's more concentrated now. There's more solute, and now we get a two molar potassium chloride solution. Notice the volume stayed the same, but the addition of more solute increased concentration from one molar to a two molar solution. Okay, for your notes, what are two ways to increase concentration or molarity of a solution? Okay, make sure you write the examples down here. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so dilution, it decreases concentration. So, Let's say we have a 12 molar HCl acid solution here. Very, very strong acid, okay? And we'd like to make a three molar HCl solution so it's not as strong of an acid. Well, how could we do this? Well, in order to make a weaker solution and decrease the concentration of a 12 molar HCl solution, we need to add more water or solvent, okay? So watch, we add more water or we dilute it, okay? Okay, so now we have a three molar HCl acid solution and it's a weaker acid. Okay, so dilution decreases concentration. So how can we decrease concentration or the molarity of a solution? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm gonna move on. All right, so dilution calculations. 
A typical dilution calculation involves determining how much water must be added to an amount of known stock solution, okay, or standard solution. The key to doing these calculations is to remember that only water solvent is added to the solution. We're not adding solute, we're only changing the solvent or water. Okay, so the amount of solute in the final more dilute solution is the same amount of solute in the original concentrated stock solution. Okay, in other words, okay, moles of solute after the solution equal moles of solute before dilution. Okay, so this brings us to the dilution equation. So recall that a standard solution is a solution in which the concentration is accurately known. One molar, two molar, three molar. Okay. Well, chemists use a dilution equation to create standard solutions here. M1, V1 equals M2, V2. Okay, so we have molarity before dilution, the, the volume before dilution, okay, and the molarity after dilution, okay, and the volume after dilution, okay? All right, so what is the dilution equation? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I want to move on. All right, so dilution calculations. What volume of water is needed to create a 2 molar HCl solution from a 10 milliliter 12 molar stock solution? Okay, here's our dilution equation here. All right, so let's set up a table and think about what we know here. Here's what we want to create. It's our final condition, okay? And that is M2 then. Okay, so let's plug that in there. All right, and here's what we're starting with. 10 milliliters of a 12 molar stock solution. So let's plug those in, okay? All right, so and we're solving for V2, how much water we need to add. So let's rearrange the equation and solve for V2 we get. Okay, bring our M2 over and we get V2 is equal to V1 times M1 divided by M2, okay? Now we can just substitute in our values and we get, okay, our M1, our V1, okay, was 10 milliliters and M2 is two molar. Okay, so solving for V2, we get, okay, 60 milliliters of water is what we need to add to make our two molar solution here. All right. All right, so go ahead and practice. Now it's your turn. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write and practice this. When you're ready to check your work, all right, hit play. All right, so let's see how you did here. Okay, so let's bring in a little table and think about what we know. We want to create a three molar HCl solution. Okay, that's our final condition, M2 here. Here's the solution we're starting with, 20 milliliters of a 12 molar stock solution. Okay, so let's plug those in. All right, and once again, we're solving for V2, okay? All right, so let's once again rearrange the equation for V2. Bring our M2 over. So V2 is equal to V1 times M1 divided by M2. All right, plugging in our values, we get, okay, our 12 molar for M1, 20 milliliters for V1, okay, and three molar for M2. Let's solve for V2, okay, and we get 80 milliliters. All right, hopefully you got that right. All right, so dilution calculations. Let's look at one more problem here. So what concentration results when 200 milliliters of a 0.5 molar solution of magnesium sulfate is added to 800 milliliters of water, resulting in a final volume of 1,000 milliliters? Okay, how did I get 1,000 milliliters? That's 200 here plus 800, okay? So once again, let's set up our table and think about what we know. Okay, we know what we're starting with and we know what we wanna get. Okay, so we know V2. This is the final volume here. We know we're starting with 200 milliliters of a 0.5 molar solution. So those are the initial conditions, okay? 0.5 molar, okay, and we're solving for M2. What is the final molarity here, okay? All right, now we can rearrange the equation for M2. We get, okay, M2 is equal to V1 times M1 divided by V2. Okay, now we can simply substitute in our values, all right? So for M1, 0.5 molar, V1 is 200 milliliters, and V2 is 1,000 milliliters. That is the final volume. 
and solving for M2, we get, okay, 0.1 molarity. All right. Okay. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and pause this while you practice this question. When you're ready to check your work, okay, hit play. All right. Let's see how you did. Let's set up our table here. Think about what we know here. Okay. We know the final volume is going to be 600 milliliters. Okay. And we know, okay, what we're starting with here, a volume of 300 milliliters and a two molar solution. All right. And we're solving for M2 again. All right. So let's rearrange the equation for M2. We get... M2 is equal to M1 times V1 divided by V2. Okay, so plugging in our values, we get, okay, our M1 was 2 molar, and it had a volume of 300 milliliters. All right, and our V2, the vinyl volume, was 600. Solving for M2, we get, okay, a 1 molar solution. Okay, all right, hopefully you got that right. All right, so summarize here. Okay, you can always write your own. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your summary and work on your summary for 20 points here, and we'll see you next time.